Welcome to video three of when we start our first phylum, which is periphera. It's considered the simplest of animals, and of course, it's sponges. So here's a little slideshow of a few different types of things like the tube sponge. And here's what we're going to be covering uh, in the lecture today. Describes structure and function in sponges, three common classes of sponges, the three different structural forms of a sponge, and name and describe the different spells of a, cells of a sponge. So you could freeze the video right now and see if you can answer these questions before we get started. Did you freeze the video? Hopefully. Anyway, here are a few different types of sponges that um, to show some of its diversity. The orange golf ball sponge, very common in here in the near shore environment in New Zealand. And this is a uh, tube sponge from the tropics, uh, New Zealand cancer-fighting sponge. It's having some e um, efficacy with the compound that's in there and fighting breast cancer, um, or at least being tested. This is a cosmetic bath sponge that a lot of people have been using for thousands of years, the squishy type. Uh, and when you get a cluster of deep... Um, or a cluster of sponges of lots of with lots of diversity, you call it a sleaze. And uh, they get very big, like this uh, massive barrel sponge from the tropics. And quite beautiful, like this uh, Dendrilia rosea from um, around Motiti Island. And we get things like the finger sponges, and even encrusting sponges growing on other animals. So this is a nice way for a crab to uh, appear to be uh, just part of the benthic environment. So where do they live? And you'll see the little flashcard icon up in the, at the top. Remember, we did the exercise with flashcards. This is a good time to take some of your flashcards out, if you have any, and um, write down a couple of things, like where do they live? And you might put on the other side, uh, marine and attached to the bottom. So most are marine, a very few are freshwater. None of them are terrestrial, and they, but they all live attached to the bottom, benthic. Now they can li live attached to floating substrate or piles or something like that, but they're all attached to some substrate. There aren't any planktonic sponges besides the larval dispersal phase. Here's another uh, term for you to know. It's called totipotency. So each individual cell can be thought of, can be taken away and thought of as an individual organism, but when they're together, they behave as a colony. And each different cell can um, morph into the other types of cell within the colony. The, uh, that toady means all, potent means living or viable. And so all the cells can be taken away and be able to survive on their own given the right conditions. Now you can't take a skin cell off of yourself and grow a whole new uh, human, uh, you, not without uh, some massive cloning operation in a lab, but uh, you will not be able to clone yourself with a single cell, uh, but sponges, can lose a single cell and regrow a whole new colony. So what are they? No tissues and no organs. Okay, so they're simple. They don't have tissues or organs. Tissues being a collection of cells that work together to perform a function and organs being a collection of tissues that work together to be to perform a function. No tissues, no organs. Um, they are influenced by the substrate, space, and water movement. So there is no particular body form of any particular species of sponges. Some may tend to be barrel sponges. Some may tend to be encrusting or a cluster uh, or um, globose, like a ball. But there is no particular form that any one sponge will have. Like uh, there's no symmetrical arms and legs like a human has. They are uh, adapted to whatever environment that they, or they will 
grow into whatever environment they settle. So for each of the phyla, I am going to give you a, a diagram that is essentially the basic body plan of that particular organism um, or that particular phyla. And most of the organisms within that phyla will have only uh, some variations of that basic body plan. And this is the one for sponges. So we'll start with water movement. Water is moves through a sponge and then sponges filter out food particles uh, in the form of phytoplankton, bacteria, other things that are suspended in the water column. And they, uh, in, in order to do that, need to have water movement through the sponge. So that's what this is. The water comes in to the sponge and then goes out. So if you think of this as like a barrel sponge, a uh, very small barrel sponge, there would be a hole at the bottom. This is a cutaway at the top. This is a cutaway diagram. So the water will move in and then back out through the sponge. And where it moves in are these uh, little areas here through the in the body of the sponge. And there is essentially a donut shaped cell with a hole in it. Okay, that is called a porocyte. And what that means is the water can come in through that hole and into the center of the body of the sponge. If you think about uh, the ability of a porocyte to open and close this hole as well, if there's something toxic or in the water or the uh, sponge doesn't want to feed, it can just close this hole down and restrict water flow. That is called a porocyte. Now, poro means hole, and site means cell. And those two roots are something that you should learn. <clears throat> so where does the water go out? It goes out through something called the osculum. And the osculum is the opening to the sponge. Now, if you think about it, you will never be able to see a single cell. So you can't see where the water goes into a cell or into a, a sponge. If you see a hole in a sponge, and you will see lots of holes in sponges, that is where water is flowing out. So we know we've got water movement now. Um, and so we look on to the next uh, type of cell which is a panacocyte. Okay, so these are flattened endothelial cells. And we see that root word site there again, which means cell. So you have cells that are sort of a flattened cell like this, here's a little nucleus, and they make up the outer protective layer of the sponge, essentially the skin of the sponge, panacocytes. Okay, so, on the inside of the cell, or of the sponge body, we have a layer of cells, which we'll look at in a little closer detail. And that layer is called the coanoderm. Okay, and derm means skin or layer. And that is made up of coanocytes. Okay, cells, again, coanocytes. Okay, and I forgot to mention that panacoderm, okay, panacoderm, it is the layer made up of panacocytes. All right, so once you start putting these together, they should start to make sense. Coanoderm is made up of coanocytes. So what are the coanocytes? They're also known as collar cells. We'll look at them a little more closely. They have a flagellum and they have cilia. And the cilia filter out food, whereas the flagellum wave around, they beat around, they're like little oars, little paddles from each of these cells and they induce the water current. When they wave, they induce the water to come in through the water through the porocytes and in, out through the osculum. Okay, so there's the flagellum. 
right, and the cilia here. Okay. And so you have the atrium, which is the opening within the uh, body of the sponge in which the uh, water can move in and where the lined up coanocytes live. Okay. And separating the two layers, so you've got sort of a, a layer of cells here and the layer of cells on the outside, you have a jelly-like substance uh, that keeps those apart. And those are called, that's called mesohyle. So it's got some structural function, but it is also a uh, way, a medium for which these other cells can move through the body. So the cells that move through the body of the sponge are called amoebocytes, and we see the root site again. And that is a, an amorphous or without shape type cell that will pick up uh, the digested food from the panacocytes that's been caught on the cilia, and then it will take that food and share it with the rest of the colony. So it will take the, the, the food particles that have been uh, caught by the cilia and then move around through the mesohyle and share the food with the, with the panacocytes. Uh, they also have another job, which is to secrete these things called spicules. Okay, so here's another spicules. And what these uh, sponges have that are very interesting are little uh, defensive mechanisms. Because if you are essentially a bag of meat, like what a sponge is, living cells in the, uh, in the ocean, you put bait down on a hook, eventually something's going to come along and just eat you. And so by producing these uh, structural components, but also um, defensive components, these are little silica or calcium carbonate needle-like structures or little balls with um, pointy bits on them that are the equivalent of having something that is, if you take a bite of it, is like chewing up little needles of glass, which make the, them really unpleasant to eat. The other defensive mechanism that they have, since they can't run away, they're benthic, they're attached to the bottom, that means that they need to uh, be able to defend themselves. And another way of doing that is by using poison. So we don't eat sponges. And the reason is because most of them have some quite strong biotoxins. All right, so I think we've covered everything that we will cover for this video. And in the next videos, we'll go into more detail of how these individual components work.